All right, hello everybody. So, my name is Aman Bargava, as you can see on this lovely slide. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about brain scans, AI, and education. And this is all for my AP research project. And I am wearing my brain scanner on my head right now. So that's, that's what's going on. I'll show you my brain waves in a second. It's going to be great. So, to begin, for my AP research project, I'm doing a full year project on this question. And that question is, to what extent can EEG and machine learning be used to predict the interest level of a given student? And EEG is just the name of this specific brain scanning technique. So what that means is basically, I am uh, trying to make this AI, it's gonna be my AI, and my goal is that I'll be able to input brain data into that AI, okay? So I'm gonna be able to input it into that, and what my AI is gonna tell me is whether or not that person is interested. And I want it to be correct as much of the time as possible. So I want it to be good at doing its job. So it's gonna take in the brain scan data, and it's gonna tell me if the person is interested or not. So that's my whole project. Now, often when I explain this to people, when I tell them about what I've been up to, they ask, how did I actually end up doing this as my project? How did I end up in the AP Capstone program? And so it all started in grade 10. So I was filling out course selection forms with my guidance counselor, and like many of the grade 10s and 11s in the audience and 9s, maybe doing right now. And um, they told me about the AP Researcher Capstone program. And uh, what they told me was that it's a very academically rigorous program, it's very good if you want to go to the United States for university, and that in the second year, you get to do a research project on anything you want for the whole year. So I thought, okay. That sounds pretty awesome, getting to do uh, any research project you want for an entire year. And uh, I also want to go to the U.S. for university, so that sounds pretty good. And who doesn't love a good academically rigorous course, right? So, <laughs> the next year I was enrolled in grade 11 AP seminar. And so in that course, you're, uh, what they teach you is all about the skills that you need in order to do research sort of properly. So um, they teach you how to use databases, library resources, all that kind of stuff. But the most important thing that I got from the course was actually the subject matter of the sort of practice research projects that we got to do. So during the year, you do a few of these practice research projects. And the first one I did was all about education and the future of education. And so I was looking at how technology is going to be used in the classroom. And what I found was that it looks like uh, a lot of the classroom is actually going to be automated in the uh, distant future. So we're going to have a lot of automated technology in there because machines can actually learn how our kids learn faster and better than people can. It's kind of a weird concept, but basically AI and machine learning, um, there's going to be a lot of that in the classroom in the future. And then one of my last projects in that course was about the future of medicine, and I found much the same thing. In a lot of uh, the medical applications, we're going to have a lot of robots and machine learning algorithms. And so especially in like radiology departments, um, machine learning algorithms tend to be able to read scans super well compared to humans. So that's what I learned in there. So I got sort of interested in AI and that kind of stuff, and that set the stage for my research. And so once I entered grade 12 research in September of this year, I had a few things that I need to do. So during the whole course, these are basically the four things you need to do. You have to pick a topic, and then once you do that, you do your background research, and then you conduct your own new research. That's the thing that's special about AP research. You do your own new research instead of looking at what other people are saying, and then you write a paper about it. So the first thing I needed to do was to pick a topic. So I thought, okay, I know that AI is a pretty interesting thing that I've been looking at. You know, last year I learned about it, and then in the summer, since I was interested, I did an internship at an AI company and all that, and I've been learning about it on my own. So I said, okay, AI, that's one possible route. Uh, sciences in general, you know, I've always liked uh, physics, chemistry, and biology. Those have always been some of my favorite subjects, so that was another option. And so was medicine. I thought medical research would be pretty interesting. Both my parents are doctors. I've been interested in medicine for quite a while, and you know, it's just a very fascinating field. Uh, mathematics and computer science research, that's also an option. I've always liked math and computer programming and all of that. Uh, same with education, you know, I'm invested in the system since I am a student. And um, also psychology is something that's interested me for a while. 
Now, instead of picking just one of these things, I ended up combining them all into my research question. So the research question uh, sort of combines them by one, EEG brain scanning is a medical technique, and there's a lot of science that goes into it. So the chemistry of how the neurons interact with all of this stuff, which I'll talk about a bit later, um, that really has to do with EEG. So those two are uh, what EEG um, is all about. And then machine learning has all to do with, obviously, AI, and also mathematics and computer science. Uh, machine learning is basically just uh, very complicated math formulas that you're applying. And then interest level is a uh, psychological and an educational characteristic that's important to take a look at. So once I decided on my question, I had all of these things to do as of October of 2017. So I had to conduct my background research, research all about EEG, machine learning and all that, design my experiment, I had to get approval from the institutional review board for my experiment, so I had to go to Mr. Hayden and be like, hey, can I do this uh, with our students? And then he'd be like, yeah, or he'd be like, eh, you should probably not do that. Um, and then after that, I would just conduct my experiment, then process my data, and then in my case, I had to do some machine learning algorithm than engineering, and then finally I would write my paper. And so by January of 2018, I had done the first three things. So I'd done my background research, I designed my experiment, and I had gotten approval for my experiment. Uh, and so all that was left for me to do was conduct my experiments and do all these other things. So on January 4th, I actually went out and bought this uh, very headset we see here. So I, you can actually buy brain scanners online, which is, I don't know, it's kind of funny to me. Um, and so on January 4th, I ordered this online, and on January 18th, it finally came in the mail. I was very excited. There are some exclamation marks from the Snapchat uh, thing that I uh, took this on in the picture on the right. And then on February 1st, I was finally on to actually conducting my experiment. And we have Marlon here being very fascinated by some uh, articles that I printed out for him. So now, all that I have to do is train these machine learning algorithms and process my data. So um, these pictures, just to explain what they are, the one on the left is a picture of some Java code that I wrote to um, you know, get some features out of my data, to, because this actually records a ton of data and um, you have to compress it a bit. Uh, the, thing, the top thing on the right is just a uh, piece of code in the programming language Octave for extracting more features. And then the thing in the bottom right is actually what the raw data looks like that comes out of this headset. So now that we've gone over what I had to do to get here, let's talk about the science behind my project, which I think is the most interesting part. So EEG, the brain scanning technique I'm using, is um, it, the full name is electroencephalography. So if we break that down in Greek, we have electroencephalography. And so that means electricity brain describing in Greek. Um, and basically, we're describing the electricity that's going on in my brain, or in whoever's brain this is on. And so now we are fortunate enough that we are able to actually take a look at my brain waves. That's why I'm wearing this uh, silly thing on my head. So I am just going to plug in my little dongle to get the data. And then I'm going to open another application. I really hope this works because um, that would be pretty embarrassing if it didn't. Hey, OK. So we are all good. I just need to turn this on. And then uh, hopefully it will connect. It is connecting. And we have connections. So hey, there we go. And we have, in the top here, we can see 85% connectivity. So, you know, not exactly a scholar, but I'll take it. Um, <laughs> oh, we're down to 83. This is just getting worse. Okay, let's stop focus on this. So now, if we go here, we can actually see my brainwaves. Isn't that cool? So these are my live brainwaves. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, when I like talk, it changes slightly because my brain is working differently. My neurons are firing differently. And if we go back, I actually forgot to explain this to you guys, this thing down here. So basically what happens is that my neurons are making little electrical impulses to sort of talk to each other. But those electrical impulses sort of leak out. So they go through the cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid surrounding my brain, and then they go through my skull and through my scalp. So if we have fine enough sensors on my head, we can actually sort of tell what's going on. We can feel those little electrical impulses. So that's how it goes from the neurons to electricity to my scalp to this graph here. So we have this. Um, as If we, I shake my head a lot, it'll change a lot. So these are my brain waves. And now we can actually map these onto my brain to see what's sort of going on in a little bit of a different way. So I'm going to show you another application. It's called BrainViz. Um, brain viz, and so hopefully it'll load. So what this does basically is that it takes a 3D model of my brain, and then it will map on 
uh, the sort of amplitudes of my brain waves. It's actually way easier just to look and see. So I'll shut up for a second and just connect this. And so hopefully we'll get, okay, I've already done this step, very good. And 83, okay. Um, so now <laughs> I'm just gonna turn these up so that you can see it. So hopefully we'll see that it starts to read my brain waves. So we're actually looking at the activity of my brain right now. This is a live feed of what my brain looks like. <laughs> Now this is skewed a bit by how well the electrodes are contacting my head. So maybe in the back the electrodes aren't contacting it very well, that's why it's an 83% instead of 100%. But, um, anyway, so that is what it looks like on my brain and we can you know, move around if we want, if we change mode, hopefully, yeah, there we go. Uh, we can move around and we can see what my brain looks like and that's pretty fascinating. Now the thing that really got me interested in... <laughs> The thing that really got me interested in EEG technology was this little demo here. So, now if we do a bit of simple pattern matching, so um, if we do a bit of pattern matching, we can actually control things with my brain on the computer. And it works somewhat well. This is a pretty rudimentary application, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some good stuff going. So we'll go into the mental command section, because you know that's a thing. And um, we'll add one. So this cube, or this, um, I guess, how many cubes is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These seven cubes on the screen that are all stuck together, I'm going to be moving them around the screen with nothing but my brain. It's going to be awesome. So, um, if I go, I added this command, so I'm going to go into the training, and basically all I'm doing, now I'm going to do the neutral state training, so I'm going to try to go into my uh, happy place, and oh, it is already trained, that is going to be a problem. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to record my brain data while I'm thinking about it staying still, okay? And hopefully the computer will be able to sort of tell what's going on and uh, see if I can control in the future. So, everyone be quiet, I used to be in my happy place, okay, one second. <laughs> gonna have a really big payoff, I promise. <laughs> okay, that's good enough. Um, okay, so now I've recorded my neutral state, now I'm going to be recording my push state. So I'm thinking about this box being pushed backwards. So I'm gonna start recording now. Uh, so let's see, here we go, so start training. All right, so I do accept this training. Okay, so let us see. Now, as we can see, I'm pushing it, and let's see if I can do it again. Here we go, come on, let's go. Uh, 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 okay, no, uh, I'm not gonna get into that. Anyway, so this demo I find super fascinating, even though it doesn't always work, possibly because of the 83 connect, 83% connectivity, but I found it super interesting that you can just control things with your brain. I'm going to take this off because it's actually kind of uncomfortable after a while. Um, so yeah, that's what sort of got me interested in the EEG aspect of this. Um, it also messes up your hair, which is a little annoying. Um, so now let's move on, um, sorry if I'm taking up too much time, to the machine learning phase. So what exactly is machine learning and how does it work? So machine learning is just a very general term to describe when a machine or a computer gets better at a task the more experience it has at that task. Okay, so let's say I had some algorithm that was predicting a house price based on square footage. If I gave it a bunch of data and it got better the more data it was given, we would say that it's a learning algorithm, okay? And so just to break these things down that are on the screen, the top left, that is an SVM that you may have heard of, uh, it's a type of machine learning algorithm. The one on the top right is a more popular one, it's a neural net, it can be used for all sorts of things like photo recognition, uh, your phones probably have a lot of these running uh, to spy on you, I mean what? Um, and um, the thing on the bottom left is from this uh, homework assignment I did for a course over the summer in machine learning, and then the thing on the right, bottom right is also from a homework assignment that I did for this course over the summer in machine learning. So the way that my algorithm is going to function is basically, we can see in this little cartoon at the bottom, I'm going to show it a bunch of brain scan data, and then I'm going to say, okay, this guy, the guy whose brain scan data this is, he was super interested in what he was doing. He was like reading a really interesting book or something. And so it's going to try to learn from that, and I'm going to show it a bunch of examples of people who are interested and people who are uninterested, and it's going to be learning. And then finally, when I just show it the brain scan data, it should be able to tell me whether or not the person is interested without me telling it if the person is interested. See, that little arrow, it went away. And it can already tell me. And that's pretty cool. So that is my goal of my research. 
And so after I decided that and after I formulated my experiment, I needed all of this data so that I could train my machine learning algorithm. And that is what I did uh, with my 10 peers. I recorded them while they read three articles each. And that's how I got my data for the machine learning algorithm. And I have started to train it. I, just last night I was playing around with it. And I have been able to get it up to a 78% accuracy level. So it can tell 78% of the time if someone is interested in it. So another, the last thing that I was asked to talk to you about was my emotional journey through this. Um, now I'm happy to say that I've been pretty positive throughout this whole thing. Um, I haven't really had too many like major speed bumps, and when I have, I've been able to, you know, deal with them reasonably well. And I think that really that is because I'm really interested and like excited about doing the research that I'm doing, and that's what I think has sort of driven the success of this research so far. And so. It has actually been a really awesome experience. Um, I would say that AP Research has been one of, if not the most satisfying courses to go through because I've been able to work with my teachers as well as my peers to create my question and then to do all of the background research that I have needed. And then on top of that, I've been able to plan out and conduct that research, which has been amazingly satisfying. And so I'd really like to give a huge thanks to Ms. Bruff, my, my AP capstone teacher, as well as Ms. Strawn and Mr. Healy. And so yeah, thank you very much to them, and that has been my presentation.